are yet to understand the mystery of worship. And so, you know, you hear music ministers preach a lot on worship. And they think that God has given them the divine responsibility to lead the church in worship. And that's a lie. They don't understand. They don't understand it. The music ministry will not lead the church in worship. You can, you can understand the scriptures for yourself. Worship is not singing. Are you hearing me? Worship is not singing. Worship is deeper than singing. Why sing then? Singing, you see, music is special. Music helps the human spirit to go beyond the levels of fear and doubt and the crippling effects of his environment. The thoughts of evil that fill his environment. Music helps the human spirit to see what it sings. But that in itself is not worship. That's the reason a lot of times we sing and we inspire the Holy Spirit to sing. And you sing the right songs, you get the right results. You sing and your singing helps you, helps your spirit. That's why many times the music uh, ministry is described as a helps ministry. And that's not wrong. You remember the case of Elisha when he was offended at the king of Israel. And uh, he, you know, they wanted the word of the Lord and he couldn't give it because he was angry. And anger can uh, help you out of God's will sometimes. <laughs> That means channel you the wrong direction. And so he said, get me a musician. Get me a harpist. Get me a singer. And so they brought him a musician. And the Bible records that when the harpist began to play, the Spirit of God, the hand of God came on Elisha. And he prophesied. The man... The musician didn't bring the presence down. There was nothing wrong with the presence. There was something wrong with Elisha. He wasn't asking for the musician to bring down the presence on him. He asked for a musician so he could turn his mind in the right direction and receive inspiration you know sometimes we think that when we watch it we bring the presence down no we live in the presence you see it we live there we're either more conscious of that presence or less conscious of that presence we're either open to it or closed against it but we live there god doesn't come and go He brought us into his presence. You see that? We didn't bring his presence to us. He brought us in. So we were born into it. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man cometh to the Father but by me cometh to the father he brings us to the father and we have been brought to the father 
And now that we have been brought to the Father, we live there. We dwell in the presence of the Father. His presence never needs to come to us anymore. We've been born into it. Hallelujah. That consciousness is very important. You see, many times our terminology robs us of the greater blessings. Because your language is based on your understanding. In other words, your understanding produces your language. You speak according to what you understand. And so you can be cheated. When you say the wrong thing and it drops into your spirit and gives you that understanding and then you give the language. Put it this way. You use the wrong words and use it long enough. It will give your spirit an understanding. It will communicate an understanding that will give you a language. Words in themselves are not the problems. What eventually destroys a man is his language. You see, you express yourself in words. But the words themselves will not form a language until you put them together to express a thought. See that? That's the reason you got to say the right thing. You, if you say, oh, when the worship came, oh, the presence of God came down on, on the congregation. That's a lie. And God can't bless that. He'll bless you to a very limited level until you come to understand who you really are. You know, so, well, praise the Lord, we enter into his courts with praise and into his gates with thanksgiving. What do you mean? That's long past. You don't do that anymore. So when did you, you know, they think that when they closed the service, they went out of the gates and out of the courts. <laughs> so next Wednesday or next Sunday, they come to the courts and the gates again. He said, open unto me the gate of righteousness. I will enter in and praise the Lord. He says, this gate of the Lord into which the, the, the righteous will go. This gate. That's what he was talking about when he said, lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Some thought that it was when he was coming out of hell. But he didn't say the king of glory shall go out. He said, shall come in. And the voice said, who is the king of glory? He said, the Lord is the king of glory. And he cried out again, lift up your heads, all ye gates. And even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. The gates of hell cannot be called everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. He said, who is the king of glory? Why? Because the man had been born again. He was born again when God raised him from the dead. He became the head of the new creation. And even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. He said, who is the king of glory? He said, the Lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle he is the king of glory and brother he went right in and when he went through those gates i went in with him so do i sing anymore i will enter his gods i i don't i will enter his gates no, no, no. I have, I'm inside. I live there. That 
that's why you see we don't need i said you don't need to enter and come out glory to god Woo! and i'm praising him he said let us offer unto him sacrifices of praise that is the fruit of our lips making confessions to his name how often he said continually he didn't say regularly he said continually he didn't say periodically he said continually so you don't have any time to enter because you have to do it continually you entered once and you continue to offer come on shout amen somebody hallelujah glory to god say this with me i live there i dwell there you know a lot of nice things we hear in the religious circle a lot of nice things and we just think oh that's just wonderful uh, yeah it, it sounds wonderful but is it true <laughs> sounds wonderful but is it true most of you don't stop to ask is it true they just wow this is not wonderful it sounded nice it sounded like what god would say but did he say so i mean if i was saying it lord lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land i a plain then i have found lord plant my feet on higher ground it sounds nice but it's the wrong song There are songs of Zion. Yeah. Sounds nice. I used to sing the other song. Draw me near. Oh, I could sing it. Near a blessed Lord. To the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the precious bleeding side. Bleeding side. 